Hello viewers, we will begin complex integration. So, uh, the uh, properties of analytic functions are uh, very much uh, related to uh, integration of uh, complex functions. So, the complex integration actually brings out the properties uh, of uh, an analytic function. So, to begin with we will consider an integral of a certain type. Okay. So, um, complex integration. Let f, f from uh, let us say a b to c here uh, a b is a closed and bounded interval. Okay. Uh, inter it is a subset of uh, real numbers of course. Uh, let this be a, a continuous function. Okay. And uh, let f of t now uh, f is a function of one real parameter t. So, uh, let f of t uh, be separated into its real and imaginary parts in the following way. It is a complex valued function. So, uh, let it be u of t plus i v of t for t between a and b. Okay. And then uh, let us define uh, the definite integral uh, of f of t d t okay, uh, in terms of the definite integral uh, that we already know from one variable calculus. So, let this be defined as the integral from a to b of u of t d t plus i times the integral the definite integral a to b v of t d t. Okay, so, it is defined in terms of uh, the Riemann integral that we already know okay. uh, and let us see some quick simple minded examples. So, uh, consider f of t equals t cosine t plus i times t sin t okay. and t ranges let us say between 2 pi and 4 pi. Okay. So, then uh, let us calculate the integration 2 pi to 4 pi of f of t d t. Okay. And uh, so, compute this. So, this integral uh, by definition is the integral from 2 pi to 4 pi of the real part of f which is t cosine t d t plus i times the um, integration of the imaginary part of f which is t sin t d t. Okay. And we can uh, integrate these functions the, uh, by using parts. Okay. So, uh, t cosine t the integration of this will be t uh, sin t the integration of cosine t is sin t. Okay. So, uh, between the limits 2 pi and 4 pi uh, minus the integration of the differentiation of uh, t uh, is 1 times uh, the integration of cosine t is once again sin t d t between the limits 2 pi and 4 pi that is for the real part plus i times the imaginary part the integration of imaginary part is once again uh, by using integration by parts. So, uh, the integration of t sin t is t times negative cosine t which is the integral of uh, sin t. So, you have minus t cosine t between the limits 2 pi and 4 pi minus um, the integration of the differentiation of t is 1 and the integration of sin t is minus cosine t uh, d t uh, well between 2 pi and 4 pi. So, the integral from 2 pi to 4 pi. So, this gives you well uh, sin t uh, is 0 either at 4 pi or 2 pi. So, the uh, so this piece 
vanishes okay and then minus the integration of sin t is uh, negative uh, cosine t so you get positive cosine t minus times minus is a plus so the between 2 pi and 4 pi plus i times uh, once again here uh, you get minus 4 pi cosine 4 pi is 1 minus minus so you get a plus uh, 2 pi times cosine 2 pi is 1 okay and then minus uh, the integration well this is a plus integration of cosine t is uh, sin t between 2 pi and 4 pi and that is a 0 okay uh, because sin is 0 at 4 pi or 2 pi. So, you get uh, cosine t between 4 pi and 2 pi well that gives you a 0 again. So, this is again a 0 plus i times minus 2 pi plus 0. So, it gives you minus 2 pi i. Okay. So, using integration by parts we can uh, find out uh, or compute this definite integral. Okay. So, here is another example let me uh, give this as an exercise to the viewer okay so let m and n be integers let m and n be uh, integers okay show that uh, integral 0 to 2 pi e power i m t times e power minus i n t d t is 0 or 2 pi 0 when m is not equal to n and 2 pi when m is equal to n. Okay. So, it is an easy exercise uh, using uh, the definition okay. and uh, this property actually makes these functions uh, e power i m t uh, the orthonormal basis uh, modulo some constant. Okay. Uh, it makes this uh, these an orthonormal basis for a certain vector space I mean this particular property makes it an orthonormal basis. Okay, but uh, that is an aside that is not um, directly related to this topic here. Okay. So, next uh, what we want to do is uh, we have seen this type of integral. Uh, next what we want to do is define uh, what is called a contour integral. So, roughly speaking if we have uh, a complex function uh, a complex valued function of a complex variable then we would like to uh, define its integral over a piece of string or a curve uh, in the complex plane where the curve has certain properties. Okay. So, uh, it is a directed curve and uh, there are some other properties. Uh, so, uh, what we really formally call this curve uh, is a contour. So, we define uh, the integration of a complex function on an entity called a contour. So, in order to make the definition first I need to discuss what a contour is. Okay. So, uh, here is a contour. Okay. So, contours in C. So, uh, <coughs> a curve. So, we will start with what is a curve. A curve gamma okay, with parameter interval a comma b okay, is a continuous function gamma from a b to c. Okay. So, we are defining a curve with. So, let us look at uh, another example gamma 2 of t equals uh, t plus i sin 2 pi t t ranges let us say between 0 and 1. Okay. So, uh, well gamma 2 of 0 is uh, 0 plus i sin 0. Okay. So, you get 0. 
okay so this is uh, so this starts at 0 and uh, gamma 2 traces uh, traces the sine curve in the complex plane okay where um, the real axis is uh, acting as uh, the x axis for the graph of the sine curve so you get uh, sine curve like that when t equals for example uh, 1 fourth you get 1 fourth plus i sine pi by 2 and you reach 1 fourth plus uh, i okay and gamma 2 at half for example gives you half plus i sine pi so you are at the point half on the real uh, line etc so gamma 2 at um, at uh, 1 will give you uh, 1 plus i times 0 which is 1 ok. So, uh, gamma 2 starts at the origin in the complex plane ok and at, uh, at, at time t equals half you are at this point here uh, this is or 1 fourth rather you are at this point 1 fourth plus i ok and at time t equals half you are at this point half plus 0. I mean half on the real line ok and at time 3 fourths for example, you are at this point 3 fourth plus or rather minus i 3 fourth minus i and finally, at the time 1 you reach this point uh, ok. So, uh, the particle starts here and uh, travels uh, as dictated by gamma 2 ok uh, this way and it ends up at this point. Okay. And using uh, this very uh, example, we can construct yet another example gamma 3 of t let us say is 1 minus t plus i sin 2 pi times 1 minus t ok, t ranges uh, from 0 to 1 again ok. So, uh, when we try to uh, trace gamma 3, gamma 3 by this definition is uh, is a uh, curve with parameter interval 0 1 already ok. But when we try to look at the picture when we try to visualize this gamma 3 we get this very same sine curve uh, except that it now starts at gamma 3 of 0 is now 1 plus i sin 2 pi times uh, 1 minus uh, 1 which is 0. So, this you get is 1. So, now it starts at 1 ok and when gamma 3 is at 1 fourth ok you get 3 fourth minus i. So, uh, it goes this way ok this is 3 fourth minus i at 1 fourth at time t equals 1 fourth etcetera and then you go backwards at time half you are here again half ok and then uh, at time 3 fourths you are at 1 fourth plus i ok. So, gamma 3 of 3 fourths is now 1 fourth plus i and then uh, finally, at t equals 1 you are at 0 ok. So, uh, gamma 3 is I mean has the same range as gamma 2 ok uh, in the complex plane, but it is traced in uh, in the opposite direction gamma 3 dictates the particle to travel in the opposite direction to that of uh, gamma 2 of the uh, curve gamma 2 ok. So, we already see that uh, when you when you give a curve with a parameter interval it comes with uh, uh, a direction associated with it ok. When you look at the uh, when you look at the uh, range of uh, the function in the when you look at the range of the curve gamma uh, in the complex plane. Okay. So, uh, let us uh, say that in words um, a curve okay, uh, has an induced okay, a curve over a uh, parameter interval okay, uh, has an induced uh, direction uh, due to the increasing value of the parameter ok in its parameter interval 
Okay, so you have a parameter interval for a curve, and uh, when the parameter increases uh, in that parametric interval, um, that gives an induced direction on uh, the curve. Okay, so here uh, graphically or visually, that direction refers to the direction uh, of the curve of the locus or the range uh, in the uh, complex plane. The set, uh, which is the range, okay, the set gamma star equals set of all gamma of t such that a less than or equal to t less than or equal to b okay, is called the image okay, uh, of a curve gamma over the parameter interval. And uh, we say that gamma is contained in a set S, okay, set S, which is a subset of the complex plane. Okay. So, we say gamma is contained, gamma is a, a function remember, but we use the terminology gamma is contained in a set to mean uh, when gamma star which is its range is contained in S. Okay. So, if the range is contained in S, we say gamma itself is contained in S. That is just a, a, a way of saying it okay. uh, and then a curve gamma okay, uh, over a parameter interval a b has gamma of a okay, which is a complex number okay, which is in the complex plane okay, uh, as its initial point okay, and gamma of B as its final point. So, we will use these words initial point and final point to mean gamma of A and gamma of B uh, given a curve gamma. Okay. And uh, <coughs> because there is an induced direction, okay, uh, given a curve gamma with the parameter interval a comma b, the opposite curve okay, minus gamma. So, we are we are calling uh, the following as opposite curve and we denote it by minus gamma okay, with the parameter interval, the same parameter interval okay, uh, is the curve defined by minus gamma of t is gamma of a plus b minus t, where t ranges from a to b. Okay. So, minus gamma is defined as gamma of a plus b minus t. So, uh, in the above example, uh, let me go back sorry. Okay. So, in this example here, gamma 3 was the opposite of gamma 2. Okay, because gamma 2 is traced in this direction, okay, whereas gamma 3 is the same, uh, has the same range okay, and is traced in the opposite direction. Okay. So, uh, due to that geometric significance, we want to define the opposite curve in this fashion. Okay. And uh, please note uh, that minus gamma of t is not uh, minus gamma minus of gamma of t. 
if gamma of t is a complex number, if you consider that complex number gamma of t, it is not the same as minus gamma of t is a new function, okay. it is not the same as minus of gamma of t. Okay. It is actually defined here, it is gamma of a plus b minus t. Okay. So, you have to be careful. So, um, essentially uh, visually it is clear what we want to say, it is essentially the same range traced in the opposite direction. Uh, so, it has a opposite implied direction uh, to that of gamma okay, and the parameter interval stays the same. Okay. And um, so, uh, gamma 3 in the above example is minus gamma 2. So, uh, now uh, we want to make some more uh, definitions here, some more uh, terminology is due here, a curve gamma uh, with parameter interval a b okay, is closed, we want to call it closed if gamma of a is equal to gamma of b i e its initial point is in the complex plane is equal to the final point okay and um, it is called simple the curve okay the curve gamma with parameter interval a b uh, is called simple okay, uh, if gamma 1 of t or rather gamma of t 1 is not equal to gamma of t 2 unless t 1 is equal to t 2 or in the case of a closed curve. Of course, the end points are equal, okay, the, the initial and final points are equal. So, you want to allow this uh, gamma of t 1 equals gamma of t 2 when t 1 equals a and t 2 equals b. Okay. So, apart from these cases, uh, gamma of t 1 should not equal gamma of t 2. Okay. What this means essentially is that if you look at the range of uh, gamma, Okay. A, a curve is called uh, simple if it does not have self intersections, the range does not have self intersections, okay. except that the, the only intersection you will allow is uh, possibly that the initial point is equal to the final point that is okay. okay. So, uh, that is called a simple curve. Okay. So, let me, um, let me say no self intersections. Okay, except at the end points is simple. Okay. So, here is uh, visually a simple closed curve or rather simple non closed curve Okay. What this really is in the complex plane is it is the range of a simple non closed curve. Okay, but I am uh, abusing the uh, notation and terminology here and I am calling it uh, the range itself as a curve. Okay. So, maybe there is a direction. Okay. So, uh, likewise if you have the range is something like this a circle or an ellipse or some kind of curve like this, where the initial point meets the final point. This is a simple closed curve. Okay. And uh, something like this, where the initial point is not equal to the final point and there are self intersections is a non simple non closed curve. It is non closed is clear, the initial and final points are not equal. It is not simple because there is a point of uh, rather point of intersection. Okay. And likewise, 
here is a curve okay which is which is closed okay a non simple closed So, all these are actually ranges of a uh, certain uh, curve with uh, some parameter interval. Okay. So, they come with some direction, okay. but uh, yeah, I am going to call the visualization of them as curves. Okay. Uh, so, now uh, just for motivating the definition here okay, of simple and closed. Okay. So, now let uh, uh, gamma 1 be a curve okay, with parameter interval a comma b okay, and let gamma 2 be a curve with uh, parameter interval C D let us say. Okay. Now, what we want to do is uh, sort of uh, join these two curves when it makes sense. So, suppose you have a uh, range of gamma 1 which is some piece of string sitting inside the complex plane and gamma 2 starts where gamma 1 ends okay, and suppose that uh, it continues from there okay, and it is another piece of string. What you want to do is define a join of these two. Okay. So, uh, when so here is what we will do to define the join okay, when uh, the final point of gamma 1 is the same as the initial point of gamma 2 okay, i e gamma 1 of b in this case is equal to gamma 2 of c. Okay. Then we define okay, we firstly uh, uh, we define uh, the join of gamma 1 with gamma 2 okay, as. So, this is the notation gamma 1 plus gamma 2 to mean the join of gamma 1 and gamma 2. So, gamma 1 plus gamma 2 of t this is defined as gamma 1 of t for t ranging from a to b. Okay. So, for the first part of the time uh, t is like the time parameter for the first part of the time from a to b uh, we describe gamma 1 okay. and for the rest of the time okay, for, uh, we will decide what that is for the rest of the time uh, we will trace gamma 2. Okay. So, we will uh, so, we, should, we want to start at b. Okay, now, time has to continue uh, where it has left off. So, we want to start at b okay, and uh, end where? End where? Well, uh, we have the parameter interval for gamma 2 to be of length d minus c. Okay. So, we want to uh, end at b plus d minus c. Okay. So, here is an interval of length uh, d minus c uh, which starts at uh, b. Okay. So, we have actually added. Uh, okay. So, what we have done is we have added d minus c to both sides of this kind of equation or rather we have added uh, b minus c to both, both sides of this kind of inequality. Okay. So, to compensate we will we will do the following, we will subtract b and add c to the parameter of uh, gamma 2. Okay. So, then uh, for this time interval which is actually uh, uh, a translation of the interval c d 
okay, uh, which is a translation of the interval C D, uh, gamma 2 will be traced. Okay. So, the join is uh, just a slight modification, you first travel along gamma 1, the range of gamma 1 okay, and then you uh, trace gamma 2 from there on. Okay. So, that is uh, that is a join. So, note that the join itself is a curve with parameter interval. Now, A to B plus D minus C. Um, then uh, we have done this for two curves. Okay, there is no reason why uh, we should stop with uh, two curves. If we have n curves satisfying the requirement that the uh, final point of uh, the curve now is equal to the initial point of the next curve, we can construct a join of these n curves. Okay, so we can likewise define. Uh, the join okay, the join of n curves or n yeah, curves gamma 1, gamma 2, so on until gamma n okay, uh, in that order okay, as long as the final point of gamma i minus 1 is the initial point of gamma i here uh, 2 less than or equal to i less than or equal to n. Okay. So, uh, we what is important is uh, uh, not to get lost in uh, the technicalities here and the sim, uh, symbols here. What is important is to uh, uh, know what these uh, represent okay, in the complex plane. What we want to do uh, is essentially uh, now want, want to define uh, the integration of complex function along these kind of joins. Okay. So, um, we will do an example here, we will try to join uh, four curves. Okay. So, here I have uh, let us say uh, this is the real line. Okay. So, on the real line I have minus capital R, R is some constant, some positive real number okay. and little r is some positive real number okay. and then here is R little r again okay. and then capital R again. Okay. So, I am starting at minus r going until uh, minus little r okay. and then uh, tracing this little circle here okay. and um, going along this straight line from little r to uh, capital R and then back to here okay. uh, via this semicircle in the anti clockwise direction from uh, capital R to capital minus R. Okay. So, uh, let us say uh, let me start here actually okay. does not matter let me start here and then go this way this semicircle, this straight line and then this semicircle in the anti clock in the clockwise direction. Okay. So, this is uh, the curve I want to describe. Okay. So, I can realize this as a join of four curves. Okay. So, gamma 1 of t, I okay, will start here from little r and go until capital R. Gamma 1 of t, uh, I can write this as r times 1 minus t plus r t. Okay. This is a linear equation where t goes from 0 to 1 okay. and um, that describes a straight line of course. Okay. And then gamma 2 of t is now this uh, 
semicircle in the anti clockwise direction. So, uh, gamma 2 of t uh, let me write that as capital R e power i t where t goes from 0 to pi. 0 to pi gives me ha a semicircle okay. and uh, in the anti clockwise direction uh, we have r e power i t okay. and gamma 3 of t is the straight line okay, is the straight line there um, which starts at minus r okay, and ends at minus little r. So, t goes from 0 to 1 and gamma 4 of t is that other little semicircle in the clockwise direction. So, to trace that I have um, r e raised to minus i t t going from uh, minus pi sorry um, t going from 0 to pi. or rather minus pi to 0 that is right. Okay. So, uh, so uh, we can see that gamma 1 the, the final point of gamma 1 is the initial point of gamma 2 uh, and etcetera. So, the final point of gamma 2 uh, is the initial point of gamma 3 etcetera. Okay. So, we can construct the join of these four uh, curves gamma 1 plus gamma 2 plus gamma 3 plus gamma 4 of t. Okay. We can construct the join by actually translating these uh, parameter intervals appropriately. Okay. So, uh, let us uh, trace gamma 1. Okay. So, this is equal to uh, r times 1 minus t plus r t. So, let us trace gamma 1 uh, for the time from t equals 0 to 1. Okay. So, for tracing gamma 2 I need to now start at time 1. Okay. So, from time 1, so how, should, how long should I go? Well, I should go for a length pi because uh, for gamma 2 uh, the parameter interval has a length uh, pi. Okay. So, let me go until pi plus 1. Okay. So, then uh, the description of gamma 2 will be r e power i times t minus 1 to adjust for the 1 I have added uh, to this inequality on both sides. Okay. So, when I add 1 to both sides I get 1 less than or equal to t well t plus pi. So, I am substituting replacing that with a new t okay, pi plus 1. Okay. And that new t now for compensation I will write that as t minus 1 uh, here. Okay. So, let me erase and write that as i times t minus 1. Okay. And then uh, likewise for gamma 3 uh, I should start now at pi plus 1 okay. and um, go on for a length 1 okay. for an interval length 1. So, t travels from pi plus 1 to pi plus 2. Okay. So, uh, how do we describe gamma 3 now? Well, we will compensate, we will take this equation or rather this uh, expression and compensate uh, for the uh, addition of gamma uh, of pi plus 1. Okay. So, then we get 1 minus t minus pi plus 1. So, we get pi plus 2 minus t minus r times well, uh, t minus pi plus 1. Okay. And finally, uh, uh, we need to trace uh, gamma 4. For that, we should start now at pi plus 2 and pick an interval of length uh, pi. So, we should start at pi plus 2 and then uh, we should end at 2 pi plus because pi plus 2 plus pi is 2 pi plus 2 okay. and then we trace uh, r e raised to minus i and then we adjust by subtracting uh, pi plus 2. 
So, uh, that is your join. So, in practice fortunately, uh, we would not have to construct these uh, joints again and again. Uh, we will see there is something which will help us uh, um, to deal with these joints practically. Okay. But for now, uh, we understand how to join four different curves okay, or n different curves okay, gamma with a parameter interval a b okay uh, i want to say when it is considered smooth okay i'll define smooth is said to be smooth okay if uh, gamma has a continuous non zero derivative okay on its parameter interval ab okay so to avoid pathologies we will need smooth uh, curves okay so the requirement for a curve to be smooth is uh, threefold okay so firstly gamma if gamma is a curve it's a it's a function so gamma prime should be defined at every point in the interval uh, ab okay closed interval ab so at the end points the definition of derivative needs modification because uh, you need, you take one sided limits okay for uh, uh, for a or for b okay in the definition of the derivative you take one sided limits and define the derivative okay uh, but nevertheless uh, gamma should be uh, differentiable at every point in the interval okay not only that uh, the the function gamma prime when you consider gamma prime as a function that should be continuous at all points in ab okay and finally uh, gamma prime should not be zero at any point uh, in the interval a b. Okay. So, these three requirements will make a curve uh, a smooth curve. Also note that this definition of a smooth curve is a difference with the standard definition uh, of a smooth function. Uh, normally, uh, a smooth function refers to uh, a function uh, which has uh, derivatives of all orders. Okay. So, uh, here we have uh, differed from that kind of uh, definition of smooth function okay. and uh, normally what we have defined here uh, is called a regular uh, C 1 curve okay, where C 1 here refers to the uh, class of functions which are differentiable and uh, which have continuous derivative. Okay, and regular functions are functions which have a non zero derivative. Okay, but to sum all that up, we have used the word smooth and said that uh, a smooth curve, uh, we re redefined the word smooth and said that a smooth curve uh, is a curve um, which has a continuous uh, derivative and uh, a non zero uh, derivative as well at each point. Okay. So, uh, please uh, make a note of this. So, that will actually clear many pathologies okay, because continuous functions gamma as we defined it the curve as we defined it is just a continuous function from an interval to uh, the complex plane. Now, they can a continuous function can be really weird uh, for example, there are curves called space filling curves uh, which actually uh, fill up a whole uh, disk if you wish uh, f starting in an interval a b. Okay. So, um, continuous functions can be unwieldy. So, we insist that these curves be smooth, uh, so that we can play with them. Okay. And um, then we will define a path or a contour now. So, at last we have uh, reached uh, where we uh, wanted to be a path or a contour is the join of uh, finitely many Uh, smooth curves. Okay. So, a contour is essentially 
the join of finitely many smooth curves. Now, when you consider the path or a contour itself as a, uh, a curve, that need not be smooth because the points where you join. Okay, now, you get a new function join is a function remember. So, uh, the new function itself need not be differentiable uh, at the points where you join, okay. but in the meantime where you have these, uh, uh, these uh, finitely many smooth curves okay, in the meantime uh, depending on the time parameter uh, it is smooth. Okay. So, um, so, a path or a contour is called a piecewise smooth. Uh, curve. Okay. So, uh, it is it's the join of finitely many smooth curves. Okay. So, uh, I will write that in words. Notice that uh, the path okay, or a path or a contour a path or a contour okay, uh, is a piecewise smooth curve with certain parameter interval. Okay. So, depending on how many uh, or depending on the parameter intervals uh, for the smooth curves that we are picking to join. Okay. So, <coughs> and we often assign uh, the standard geometrical uh, terms such as a triangle or a circle uh, etcetera to uh, to these uh, contours depending on the range of the contour itself. Okay. So, for example, uh, let me go back uh, to the first example we chose sorry. So, here is the first example that we chose uh, gamma 1 is 3 plus 2 e power i t. Uh, I will call this curve uh, it is a piecewise smooth curve sure well it is a smooth curve. Okay. So, I will uh, I will prefer to call this a semi circular contour okay. or if you pick the uh, if you pick the following. Okay. So, gamma of t equals e power i t which is a circle 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 2 pi. Okay. So, it traces the unit circle gamma gamma traces the unit circle it starts at 1 okay, goes around in the anti clockwise direction and ends at 1. Okay. Uh, this is uh, a circular contour for example. Okay. So, we will associate the word circular etcetera to these contours depending on the, on the geometric shape of the uh, range of this contour. Okay. So, we can use these uh, contours uh, to define the contour integral of uh, a complex function. 